edition of Back Roads of Illinois with Cesar Delgado, your central Illinois agriculture source. And in the Midwest, alongside in central Illinois agriculture, we were glad you are here. All right, I am happy to back with you on a Monday. For this heat wave in the Midwest and Central Illinois, which is going to be in the 90s and the heat index within 100. Stay cool out there that the heat is not moving on sometime soon. I'll behold the discussion panel with Sustainable Aviation Fuel by the Illinois Corn Growers Association and Pete Meyer from Muddy Act, Jack with Fatka Co. Bank. It will be held on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock Central Time. Do you want to be registered for this discussion panel? Please contact me at my LinkedIn or my email of catlamonoto at gmail.com. Otherwise, we were getting our guest with Merrill Crowley from Ag Trader Talk for the show with us, and we were talking about the commodities markets. I will be added segment on the corn complex has been crazy. This is your agricultural news and markets update on back roads of Illinois. The combo was pretty bullish from yesterday's report from Brazil's Agricultural Agency for Conba. It was followed by the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimate report from the Department of Agriculture on Wednesday morning. Soybean export was pretty lower than expected because of the poor quality and competitive prices on the U.S. farmers. American Farm Bureau Federation and National Corn Growers Association sued for the ethanol production for U.S. corn farmers in the Midwest. American Farm Bureau and NCG a call for stopping to use the existing electric vehicles. It could be hurt to the ethanol production for U.S. corn farmers. They were sent out to the EPA in Washington, D.C. The heat wave is coming from the Mexico and the west to the Midwest. Temperature range is going to be 90s or above average temperature in the Midwest. Some concerns that we were going in for a drought in the Midwest and central Illinois agriculture as well. This is your Commodity Markets Update Minute on Back Roads of Illinois Corn Futures finished and down 8 to 9 cents. Soybean futures finished and down 7 to 8 cents. Wheat futures finished and down 3 to 4 cents higher. Now that we are going to talk about the livestock market for today on this afternoon. Cattle futures finished and up 2 to 4 cents per weight. Feeder cattle finished and down 7 to 8 cents per weight. Lean hogs finished and down 7 to 9 cents. Texas crude oil finished and up 2 to 3 cents per barrel. Dow Jones finished and down 7 points. We were going to have our guest Merrill Crowley from Ag Trader talk with O'Brien Markets. And we were talking about the corn market with me. Stay tuned on Back Roads of Illinois. I'm joining with Merrill Crowley from Ag Trader Talk. Welcome to the show. How are you? Great. Glad to be here. Let's start with our conversation on Brazilian production and weather in the Midwest alongside with the corn market. Could you explain to our listeners about these issues? Well, 
CONAB is running 114.1 versus the USDA at 122. Uh, Brazil started the year out uh, with some heat and some problems there. And then the southern part got hit with a bunch of rain. So, you know, it's a guesstimate. It would make me wonder why uh, the USDA is so high versus CONAP. USDA is saying they have more acres down there, but um, from what I understand, there's a lot of people down there in Brazil, feet on the ground. And, and one example would be uh, uh, Stone X has a lot of people down there. And then there's four or five different major companies down there, similar, like say with Stone X that trade and uh, export and they all are saying the same thing so it kind of bothers me and then you go to the soybeans same difference we got 147.3 USD at 153 and it's just it, it doesn't make a lot of sense unless you start looking at the current administration doesn't seem to want inflation hitting uh, so they're going to try to do as much as possible to keep these prices somewhat subdued as they go into election. Uh, let's see. I was looking for cycle lows in the corn. Uh, I don't think they've occurred yet. If it did occur, it was on June uh, 6th. These corn has a low of 458 and a quarter. Needs to hold the force. Uh, it, that needs to hold. 460 and a quarter was the low today. Otherwise, we're heading for 446. No beans also made a new low today, or they made a new low today at 1129 and half and they're having 4 11 22 and three quarters so right now things don't look real well even though i'm looking for a cycle low the pattern seems to show me that we're in a uh, fifth wave lower out of a total of five waves and once we see that then we can turn around and move higher now the long-term cycle i'm looking for is about 26 uh, months and so it could be off two months but I was really kind of looking at that June 5th time period because I had a couple of smaller uh, cycle lows coming, one in December corn and one in November beans. So um, I thought maybe the larger one would hit at that time. We'll just have to wait and see how things turn out. Like I said, the pattern doesn't say that right now. Mm -hmm. The pattern is suggesting the low might come maybe toward the end of the month when we have the stocks and, and uh, uh, acreage report, but we'll have to wait and see. I heard that it was pretty bearish from the world agricultural supply. The convo was pretty bullish from Thursday's morning. It don't make it sense to me either. Well, and the other thing is, is they're trying to source corn and beans, uh, out, especially more so out west than it is here on the eastern side of the Corn Belt. And they can't seem to get that stuff sourced. And that leads to basically one or two reasons. Uh, a, the grain is not there, so that USDA, USDA might have overestimated last year's crop. Or B, the farmers are not uh, selling like they have been. They've gone to the same point. They're sitting there saying, why sell if I can't make money? <laughs> and, of course, there's always C, which is a combination <laughs> of both um, uh, the the farmer's not selling and, and uh, the grain may be being overestimated. That again will show up at the end of the month when we do the stocks in all positions and we'll see how much grain is still on the farm. Merrill took the corn market for the last week. It went held it down to sell off on seven to nine. What is your thoughts on that? Again, I think it's more of a, a thing of the um, uh, finishing off the, the uh, five waves pattern down lower. Um, commercials are asking themselves, well, not commercials, the funds are basically selling. Um, they had, uh, they re-entered shorts in the ag uh, space. This week's commitment of traders. So the funds across the ag space are short 272,429 contracts. That's their largest. The last time they were this short, the max size was 588,626. And we have to go way back to February of this year when they did that large short. So here we got the funds short these commodities, almost uh, half as much again as what they were. And we're looking for a long time 
we're looking for some of the most volatile periods of, of <laughs> trading when you have the weather markets. And <laughs> it, it doesn't make a lot of sense at this time, <laughs> uh, but there a lot of things. Uh, when I look at markets, not just the grain markets, but when I look at the macro markets, there's a lot of things out there aren't making a lot of sense right now. And I think it's just a combination of, of uh, all the things that are occurring and people not being in this situation before. And so they really have nothing to rely on to come up with a good estimate. We are watching for the acreage report on June 28th from the Department of Agricultural. What is your sources for those reports? Well, some of the sources I'm seeing, one of them in particular, S&P Global estimated that the USDA was about a million acres short on the corn planting intentions in March. So they thought that should be higher. And they believe those acres came right out of the uh, soybean plantings. They believe that prevent plant for corn will be about the same as last year. Now, last year, the prevent plant, plant for corn was 3.56 million acres. Well, you take a million extra. I'm thinking that, you know, you're looking basically at a 2.56 million prevent plant situation. And if that is true at our current 181 um, trend yield, you're talking about... Uh, Let's see, 460 million bushel that could, with the prospective planning uh, or prevent planning, that could come off the USDA's ending stocks, and that would take it below 2 million, and that would be a better price situation mm -hmm. than what we're expecting right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the cattle markets? Tell us that the cattle heard about buying it from the market. However, we have bird flu and shirking the herd. Well, basically, the cattle market was moving slightly higher. It had had a, a earlier, it came off the highs, went down. We made a low, which was right at about 618 of the total move up. So that's almost perfect for a retracement period. Now we're running back up higher and we have to get above those highs that we had in order to really get things going again. Now, what I see when I look at that is we had a really nice bounce on Friday and they took uh, the AMS jumped 472 on their uh, cattle report then. And that's the biggest one-day jump in national average price that we've seen in about a year. The northern cash cattle sold $3 higher and dress cattle one to two higher. Southern bids had already jumped a buck the day before. And the whole premise seems to be around what the de uh, demand is and what, of course, supply demand. And the, the supply is not going to increase. Well, that's a little bit of a misnomer because we are seeing heavier cattle weights, which is increasing our supply around 4 to 6% right now. Um, as long as corn prices stay where they're at, they might tend to decide to feed them even heavier. The, um, but on the charts, it just looks to me like this whole thing is a retracement of the move down and that we will fall short. You just can't stay at all-time highs forever. And eventually, like I said, if we're going to go into this recession, what it looks like uh, uh, with the markets, then that's going to pressure cattle prices. So, because people are going to say, I just can't afford this anymore. We're currently at a time period where it doesn't seem to matter to the consumer what they pay for the beef. But you, with the prices of the hogs and the prices of the chickens, the alternatives are out there. And as these consumers get squeezed more and more with some sort of a recession or job losses or whatever, then the demand for the higher priced beef will decline. The cattle markets are doing well for right now alongside with the bird flu. But we no, had to see on the 4th of July weekend. The demand is pretty high. I agree. And, you know, that's what we're going to see for a while because 
right now it seems like it's more inelastic than elastic as far as the economics are concerned. But it doesn't, you know, you go back in history and that doesn't seem to hold. It just, you know, everybody gets all bowled <laughs> up. They give you a secondary rally toward the highs, which is usually has been referred to as a sucker rally. And with prices where they're at, um, and especially corn prices, prices of cattle, now the interest rates have changed the dynamic somewhat, but farmers can make some really good money raising cattle right now. And I think that would be better than trying to walk the grain, you know, put it into cattle to walk it off the farm at a better price than the corn at this present time. But if that corn Do rallies, you have any final thoughts on Brazilian production and weather in central Illinois? Now, there's several things going on in the weather. Uh, I mean, usually it's a very low percentage when you're talking about looking for some sort of weather uh, situation to um, hurt the crops. But when you look at the weather right now, uh, the current thing is India's, mon India's monsoon has delivered one-fifth less the rain than normal so far this season. That's about 20%. And will it get it yet or not? It still has more time. Brazil went through a drought and flood. Argentina had some dry weather. China's drought, with a record heat wave, temps up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit, are impacting, impacting 34, 30 to 40% of the growing area. Russia's had a frost, and now they've got some dry weather now. Ukraine's looking at dry weather. U.S. has some concerns for heat building, although that's a two-week thing so far. Uh, because of the eruption of some of that one, it's called Hanga Haipei. Uh, on January 15th, it put 150 teragrams of water vapor in the air. And this is more than 10% of the total stratospheric H2O content. The water vapor, what it will do, will keep nighttime temperatures from dropping as, nor as they do normally. So it will keep them elevated. And then um, the other side of the coin is we get talking about how the dry weather doesn't seem to hurt our corn because of the hybrids. Well, CO2 is what plants thrive on. And we are having higher CO2 levels. And that means that a plant can survive with le less, less water than normal. So it's kind of tough to tell right now, is it really all in the hybrids or is there something else? I do believe hybrids have improved. You look at 2012 yields versus 1988, and they're much better yields. So the hybrids have improved. But just to say that the hybrids, say, are invincible, I've heard that too many times, and I've seen that debunked too many times. Yes, with the heat, it will be great for the crop. If we get moisture. Yeah. Thanks, Merrill. Well, thanks for having me, Caesar. I always appreciate coming on. Welcome back to Back Roads of Illinois. The corn market is starting off with low prices on last week's trading and downward spiral on the board for last week about it. However, the corn crop is in the ground in the field. However, the weather is going to be playing role in the Midwest for the states like in Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana, Nebraska as well. And particularly in Illinois, we are watching for the weather models for dryness and the heat. Especially the heat index within 100 degrees in central Illinois from Mexico and the West. The beans markets are mixed bag for today's markets in Chicago. Clearly the beans markets are trading down for this spring and this planting season. However, remember that our competitors in Brazil and Argentina especially in Brazil, 
they are getting back to hit the panic button to the sales of the beans to China. However, Mexico is buying more U.S. soybean and corn. We'll see impacting the export of beans in China. This is Caesar Corner of the Markets. This is Illinois Agriculture Update on Back Roads of Illinois. Illinois for Convention held in Carbondale in Southern Illinois for last week. Thousand students were in Carbondale for Illinois 96th for Convention. Illinois for President is Trent Payne from Olney. Illinois Vice President is Brody Will from Dietrich, Illinois. The reporter is Sidney Styers from William Field, Illinois. Secretary is Emma Dinges from Amboy, Illinois. Congratulations to them for the state officer team in the state of Illinois. Now... The weather in Central Illinois Agriculture and Update. We are going to start with the warm weather in Central Illinois. Otherwise, the heat and the dryness for next couple weeks in Central Illinois and the Midwest as well. The corn crop could be on stress on this week. As far the crop progress is 70% out of 80% from emerged from 50% from the crop progress report. From the Department of Agricultural in Springfield. Illinois hay production is underway. It's 72% for cutting it for hay production. And finally, the wheat harvest is underway in southern Illinois for this season. They said that the wheat yields are pretty good at 50 bushel per acre in southern Illinois for this season. This is Illinois Agriculture Update on Back Roads of Illinois. Thanks to Merrill Crowley from Ag Trader Talk with O'Brien Markets. Well, folks, there's our show for today's program. You can listen on Back Roads of Illinois and the Markets Club podcast is going to be on Wednesday only. Wherever you get your podcast for Back Roads of Illinois. I am Caesar Delgado. Have a great day.